Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. We go from maybe having one or two Firebirds within a five-year time span to two Firebirds within a week. <laughs> Today, we are going to review and demo the brand new for 2021 December Johnny Winter Firebird. Now, you guys know that they were sitting in a board meeting going, hey, what, what should we do for the December limited editions? And one guy goes, hey, how about we do a white Johnny Winter Firebird with a special interior case? You know, he's known for his white hair and everything. So let's match that case with that and the whole snow in December, winter. Ah, oh, it's all perfect. Let's do it. At least that's how I imagine it worked out because they saved this for the holiday season. But inside here, Johnny Winter Firebird says it right there. Jay Winter Firebird. They kind of reissued that old style case. It's very similar to what we saw on the Hendrix Flying V. But let's go ahead and open this and take a look at that blistering white interior. It plays off that aged white finish pretty nicely. Okay, so these things are $8,999 brand new, so about 9,000 bucks. They are a limited edition of 125. That's pretty limited. However, at the launch date, these things really aren't selling out all too quickly. There's still quite a few if you wanna pick one up for retail and not have to pay somebody on the reseller's market. So before we dive into what makes this particular Firebird interesting, let's go ahead and learn a little bit about Johnny Winter. Johnny Winter is an American singer, songwriter, guitarist, producer. He did a whole bunch of stuff within the blues rock genre. For me, it's really hard to describe his style outside of blues rock. I can't really necessarily say, oh, you should listen to this song, this song, this song. It's just type his name into YouTube, find a playlist, listen through all the stuff kind of like I was doing, and then you will realize the mastery of Johnny Winter. Like if you want really cool pentatonic blues style riffs all up and down here, a little bit of slide playing even, that's what you want. He played with people like Muddy Waters, Edgar Winter, you know, his brother from the Edgar Winter group. He's played alongside Rick Derringer, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, and even Tommy Shannon. So do yourself a favor, check him out if you're not familiar, but I'm sure a lot of people watching this video are very familiar with his work. So, as I was telling you, he, he's the Firebird guy. He was known for using Firebirds, now he used other instruments as well. But this is a reissue of a 1964 that he had owned and played quite often. So, they took his and they pretty much just replicated it the best they could with the wear and tear. These were Murphy Lab aged, so they're all going to be just a little bit different on how they aged them. But it's got the finish checking everywhere. It's got the worn in Firebird logo right there. It's got the metal switch tip here instead of your standard plastic one. They replicated in the finish the cracks that his original had. They took the topper off one of the knobs. His initially had one of those Vibroli units on it that got secured to it using six screws. They took that off, but still put those holes in there just for you. So it's a stop bar conversion version. <laughs> That's fun to say. However, at $9,000, these things are very, very expensive. Now, in my opinion, if you're going to drop nine grand, and you can only get one of these, I would probably suggest the original run from 2008 slash 2009. There were approximately 150 of those, and instead of a 64 reissue, that was a 1963 in a vintage sunburst finish. And prior to these things coming out, when you typed in Johnny Winter Firebird, you know, photos, trying to see it live, you would see that sunburst one a heck of a lot more often than the white one. But now that these have come out, you know, the Google search kind of got contaminated with all the white ones too. So I'm honestly Honestly, not sure which one he used more often. But the 2008 run, it had similar modifications and wear, but those were actually Murphy age, not Murphy Lab age, because Murphy Lab is a new thing, but Tom Murphy himself aged every single one of those, from my understanding of it anyways. That original one had a signature Johnny Winter Firebird decal on the back of the headstock, and some of the early ones, it's rumored only the ones that came from Wildwood Guitars got signed on the back, but he actually personally signed some of these little back plates. So those are the most collectible ones. But Johnny also hand signed all those COAs. So you're probably asking, ah, that's kind of a shame. Why didn't he sign this one? Well, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. He died in 2014. So for my money, I would still go the original route because those things weren't selling for much more than 6,000 bucks that long ago. But now that these are out, oh, surprise, surprise, they're all showing up on the used market now for quite a considerable bump in price. And you know, sometimes that's all that needs is a reissue to correct market pricings. I mean, once again, look at the Adam Jones Silver Burst. It just made that market go crazy for vintage Silver Bursts. 
But at the end of the day, these are collector's instruments. Most people will be getting these as an addition to their collection. They're going to own both of the Johnny Winter Firebirds. But that's how I personally felt about it. So first impressions on this thing. It's really nice having a custom shop style Firebird. Just, just a couple of days ago, we did a custom shop original Firebird snakeskin, but that wasn't a custom shop guitar. That was just a USA that had a special paint job. So this will be different getting to actually experience one of these. And as far as aging jobs go, maybe it's just cause I'm not as familiar with, you know, vintage Firebirds and whatnot. This, it's looking better. It does appear that the Murphy Labs division is starting to hone in on their craft. So I'll commend them on that. I would say this looks realistic. But enough about the guitar, let's check this case out. As I told you earlier, you've got your J Winter Firebird on the outside. They did not age the case at all, but it's got that Gibson badge logo right there. As you saw earlier in this, be very careful if you buy one of these that you don't get another case bite. So if you see a big ding on the top, that might just very well be a case bite because this case does want to kind of flop over on you. But we've got a COA right here. It says Johnny Winter on the outside. It's all black. And then you get a photo of him playing the guitar right there. And then you see what serial number you have. I got number 74. I bought this one from Musician's Friend, if you're curious. And it just has a white custom shop labeling on the back. It does read the limited run of 125 guitars. I don't believe they posted that on the specs page. So the COA kind of helped us narrow that down. But we also have a couple of additional goodies, which I like it when they do that because, you know, these are expensive collector's style instruments. They get displayed, so it's nice to have a full-on print right here. And then it's actually signed by the guy who took the photos of this. The man who documented the 70s, Mick Rock. So that's actually a, a real photo print. That's nice. But ladies and gentlemen, the fun does not end there. Inside this, we've got some more stuff. The ever important silica packet, don't lose that. A signature Johnny Winter Texas slide from, I believe it's what, Dunlop? Yeah, Dunlop did them. You definitely need one of those for this. Inside here we have Gibson Custom Shop picks also made by Dunlop, and they say Johnny Winter on the outside. And lastly, all your regular pre-packed checklist stuff. So you also get the matching number on here. Hey, that's actually pretty cool. They replicated the old style warranty card. Like even this looks <laughs> very vintage. That's cool. I love the way that looks too, but they're still not paying for your postage. <laughs> and then some other hang tags. All right, troglodytes, uh, to learn more about this, let's go ahead, pick it up, throw it on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs and a closer look at the aging job. And then we'll get to that playing demo. Inside the Johnny Winter Firebird. Yeah, that's right. That's what I do on my channel. We actually look inside these things to figure out what makes them tick. So as far as the pickups, they are labeled Rhythm Reissue Firebird for our neck pickup. And then our bridge position is Lead Reissue Firebird. Looks like this was made 72721. So these are fairly new pickups. This one's 61821. But within our cavities, this is what it looks like. You've got some of their buffing compound in here. That's what that pinkish hue is. But uh, they even have the finish checking in here, which isn't something you normally see in a vintage guitar, but that kind of tells you how they do these. A lot of guys are saying they put them in freezers or something. I really don't know what the Murphy Lab is doing. But look at the corrosion on the pickup cover. That's cool on the underside. And then you can see the exact same thing here on the top, all the scratches, corrosion, all that. I will say, I am very impressed with this aging job. Like the Hendrix SG, I was never really that much in love with. It had the same kind of a white finish, but super deep finish cracks. I mean, this one made around the exact same time and era looks completely different. Unless there's just something I don't know about those. But I'll be curious to see what these read. So the bridge position, 6.93k ohms. With our neck position, pretty much the same, 6.4. Then the middle position, 3.33. The pickup leads go into this little cavity right here. You can see them coming out right there. And then up here, you have your route for your toggle switch, which is the L-style bracket one. And it's done up all vintage-like right there. You can just barely see the Firebird still there. That's what the vintage ones do. They're just on the outside of the pick guard, so they can get worn away if you're a heavy picker. But this does appear to be a three ply pick guard, white, black, white. But to be honest, it is still kind of flimsy for being three ply. But they definitely tried to age that a tad. As far as our hardware, we're rocking a real ABR1 bridge with posts drilled directly into the top. And this is a non-wire ABR1. The saddles don't fall out, they're just locked into place there. And it reads Gibson ABR1 on the back. 
The tailpiece they did a lot of aging to, but this is lightweight aluminum. So continuing on here, you've got those additional holes we were talking about earlier. So that's where the vibrola secured to it. And then you're probably curious, what is that? That is where the grounding wire came out. So there's a little channel in here that leads the wire to go into here to ground off the trem system. So if you look for it right there, you can see where they actually took a wire like that, hammered it into the top to make it look like it was always there because it has to get screwed down underneath your trem system so it's all properly grounded. So that's a nice little attention to detail thing that they did there. But let's just take a second to really appreciate the aging job. You know, you got the dings where it kind of makes sense. You know, you're picking away at your strings. You're gonna likely catch the finish, especially if you're picking heavy. And it's just got that finish checking all up and down. Now the only thing I, I don't have an answer for is what is this? It's a straight up hole in the body and I can't think for the life of me what that would be for because it has nothing to do with the trem system. Maybe Johnny put something on there? I really don't have an answer for you on that. So if you have an answer for me, please leave that in the comment section. I'll heart the first comment that tells me. But we've got the nicks and dings around the edges. And here's something kind of cool. On top of what I was telling you right here, Firebirds are nine ply body neck through guitars. So this doesn't have a long neck tenon in here because the entire middle portion of this guitar is the neck. So it's neck through the entire thing. So we just have some mahogany wings that are inset into the neck essentially to create the shape. That's why this area is raised. So if you actually look at this in the light just right, you can see the walnut stripes right there, and then another one right here. Then what's really cool is I was hoping, oh, does one of these dings line up so we can actually see it? Because I haven't actually documented a natural firebird on the show that has those yet. And yes, indeed, you can. Right there, there's one of the walnut stripes and another one right there. You can just barely see it showing through there. So it's kind of cool how the white finish gives way to that if you catch it in the light just right. So I was kind of sad that, oh yeah, once again, white firebird won't be able to see it. But no, we can. And there's a surprise on the headstock. I'm, I'm learning about firebirds and I'm liking what I'm learning. We'll just take a second here to appreciate how they age the knobs well. You know, compared to pure white, they definitely have a bit of yellowing to them. This one's just missing the topper, as his is known for. Like his other one, I think it was that one was missing it. I'm sure he's not doing that on purpose, it just came off. So they replicated it. But two volumes, two tones, your output jack again, simulated cracks, not actual cracks probably just take a deep chunk with their razor blade to make it kind of feel like a crack. I mean, you can feel that with your nail. Then they chip the finish away to give it that faux cracked look. But you've got some dings along the edges. I mean, there's finish checking underneath here too. You've got finish checking and dings underneath the pick guard and everything as well too. So a well-aged guitar. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can see the inset V shape here, but I did try. So we've got 22 medium jumbo frets with the celluloid style inlays here. They look really good. Like looking at this fretboard as compared to that last one, I mean, nothing against my snakeskin one, right? But the historic ones definitely have a very different look and feel to them. This neck is definitely a little bit chunkier. And of course, all your basic stuff, 24, three quarter inch scale length, 12 inch radius, etc. Let's get our dimensions here. Oh, wow. 1.69 inches. I think my last one was what? 1.74 or something. So it doesn't feel quite as wide. No, 2.04 by the 12th, but it's still pretty chunky neck. 0.89 at the first fret neck depth and a solid one at the first. Here's the neck profile at the first and 12th fret. You can see it's a little bit skinnier than that last Firebird up here, but very rounded, comfortable for chords. But then it gets just a tad bit wider up by the 12th and a little bit fuller. But here's what I learned about the headstock. See, I always thought Firebirds had a veneer applied on top of them. But in looking at this, remember as I was telling you, you could see the lines right here. I think I've been wrong, at least about vintage Firebirds, because once again, you can see them right here. So it actually appears that they take this as one part of the neck and they like route this out so it's a step down and then they just do a black finish over top of it. That seems to be what this suggests to me. I could be wrong, but if that's really how the vintage Firebirds were done, that's cool. Cause I'm pretty sure the newer ones, they just uh, put the blank veneer over top of them, but I could be wrong too. That's what the truss rod looks like on this one. And the cover's been slightly aged. You've got the golden Gibson logo. It's a very flimsy one ply truss rod cover here. 
and they utilize these tiny little screws to secure it there too. And of course we've got all the finish checking up on here as well, but I wanted to take off this tuner because I was curious, how do these things work? So these are made by Klusen. They call them banjo style tuners because banjos use similar style tuners, but they don't stick out from the sides or anything like that. They stick out from the back. So you tune them from the back. You gotta be careful because these things will touch down on your case and potentially break your guitar because they stick out quite far. So you always have gotta be careful with your firebirds. You don't wanna ding the backside of the headstock because that's a lot of force on that whole entire neck right there when you've got it right there. But here's what these things look like. A little bit different from normal. I had measured it because somebody was asking me if they could put banjo style tuners on their Steinberger version one. So it was 0.8 inches that way with about one and a half inches tall. And then the diameter of the hole was about a half inch. So you might have to ream the headstock, I'm not sure. But the back side has a T on it and the Klusen K. So just like the vintage Klusen styles, that's just a metal bushing that's put in the top. I'll show you that on the back side too. It's kind of funny, the uh, T gets impressed into the finish. Kind of similar to what we saw on the front, there's lots of nicks and dings that mimics what's on his original. Now, if you buy three or four of these things and compare them side by side, there is a little bit of an individual aspect to each and every single one of these. Like they'll capture certain elements for every single one, like, one strap button, two strap buttons, three strap buttons. You know, if you ever have a neck divey firebird, you just move it. Or like, for example, that hole on the front, if that has something to do with something that'll be on every single one, you'll have like a neck wear area potentially. I don't really know what the specifics are for this one, because at this point in time, I only have one. But you've got all the eggshell cracking back here too. Just need some bacon. But inside our control cavity, we've got Gibson branded pots. Looks like vintage style wiring. You got your black capacitors. I'm always so amazed how small of a control cavity these Firebirds get. Like they could have spaced them out more, but they just have them right in there and they must be pretty thin if a lot of them crack by the output jack. It's kind of like how SGs are. Speaking of cracks, looks like, yeah, it looks like somebody over tightened that screw at the factory. I doubt all of them are like that. But very cool aging job here. And if you're curious, yes, you can also see the walnut stripes right here as well. Now, what's kind of crazy, though, is the body's checking is, you know, pretty uniform for the most part. But then you get to the neck and it gets all sporadic and strange. I don't know if I necessarily like that in that area. Maybe they hit it too hard with whatever they were doing. But then it just kind of normals out on the first half of the neck where it's just your usual regular lines. Now you can feel this when you're playing it. So that can be a bit of a bummer. But they did a good job on this wear area. So you can see through to the base white coat then you got the aged lacquer over top of that and then down to the bare wood. That feels pretty uniform. Like that is a good worn in neck. However, the one thing I wish they wouldn't have replicated is the wear on the edge right here. So that might be due to his playing style with the slide or his fretboard shrank a little bit and it caused a ridge and it just slowly chipped. So that's a little bit uncomfortable to play. It doesn't feel all that nice handling this, but you know, it's probably how his was. So they decided that they should replicate it. But that is like that on both sides of the neck right there. I suppose we can take a quick look around the edges too. Kind of more of the sporadic checking and lots of nicks and dings in that comfort carve area. But now moving on to the back side of the headstock, instead of a Johnny Winter decal, it's now just JWFB, Johnny Winter Firebird, and what number out of 125 you got? 74. Darn it. Wish I could have got 64 because it's a 64 reissue. But you've got the nicks and dings, finished checking as everything else. I think you've seen enough of that by now. But I did want to show you the banjo tuner imprint. Right there you can see that T impression. And of course, lots of nicks and dings at the top. Who doesn't ding up their Firebird? It's miraculous that his did not get a headstock break. All said and done, how much does it weigh? Looks like eight pounds, 4.2 ounces. Now I'm no Johnny Winner, but let's go ahead and uh, get some tone samples out of this beautiful thing. All right, let's go ahead and run through the tones of this. I'm actually gonna start with the kind of that crunchy, dirty tone that he's known for on a lot of his songs. And we'll start with our bridge pickup here. <laughs> Try that 
with our neck pickup. <laughs> time with our middle position. I really like this one. It's kind of chimey. This guitar it's got a really nice woody tone to it let's try some more johnny style stuff <laughs> Yeah, this thing does that Johnny Winter Firebird stuff pretty good. But I would hope so. It's supposed to be a replica of the one that he used. This sounds nothing like my Snakeskin Firebird. Like, even the readings were completely different on the pickups. This has something special to it. <laughs> So to get that tone out of yours, I just have my volumes like rolled down to about six with my distortion pedal. But hey, just for fun, let's take it back just to some cleans. It's not quite as bright and twangy as my last one. Like that reminds me of the sound when I had that last one at seven. But it does that same phenomenon where it gets rid of all the brightness if you roll it down a bit. I don't think you'd want to do that on this one though. I'm curious, with a little bit more distortion with that not rolled back.
hope that gives you an idea of the tones. I'm far from the Johnny Winter master of all of this, but man, just listening to his stuff, it's like, yeah, that's what I've been wanting to play my whole life. So if nothing else from this video, please check out Johnny Winter if you haven't already. I mean, he's before my generation necessarily. He's not as highly sung as some of these other guitar heroes, but there are a lot of really good repeatable riffs. I mean, what I play tonight is simply just a recreation of what I listened to after maybe an hour and, you know, if you've watched my show, I'm not the best guitarist in the world. I enjoy playing guitar, but I'm far from fantastic. But this thing really inspired me to play differently. And it's a true testament to what he can do and what he plays. So yeah, if you like that blues rock genre, you're gonna enjoy listening to his music. And if you enjoy his music, you're gonna enjoy having his white firebird. So is it worth 9,000 bucks? I can tell you it feels way different than that USA level Firebird that we reviewed a couple of days ago. The neck profile is way different on this, much more akin to my style that I do like. It's rounded without being too overly wide, so it's almost like worn in feeling. It's a great profile for me. The aged white finish is looking pretty good on this too, but 9,000 bucks for a brand new guitar. It is pricey. But, you know, Murphy Lab Age, you got the signature artist. You can justify it as a collectible, but as far as just something to buy and play out and gig, yeah, at that point, uh, you might as well just get like a USA one or a regular custom shop to get your price down. But it's a fantastic guitar. So if you're buying this to invest, what's great is it's already aged. So sure, you get a small scratch and nick or ding here or there. It's not gonna hurt the value of the guitar. So there is a blessing with it being aged at the same time. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.